we are talking about binary passband signaling, right? And um, as a as a slightly more general case of binary signaling uh, than the binary PSK, we are actually looking at uh, what we can actually call Fourier uh, scheme, although we are under the general title of binary schemes at the moment, uh, that is the quadrature phase shift scheme, right? Uh, it is because we thought that each of the two quadrature carriers, when modulated in a BBSK manner, in a polar antipodal manner, gives rise to the quadrature phase shift king that we uh, talked about. And this was a picture that I think I showed you at that time. This constellation diagram corresponds to QPSK. To recapitulate for you, we have two quadrature carriers in QPSK. Um, each modulating, each modulated by possibly one of the two bits that, that is, either we can think of these two carriers being independently modulated by two streams, two bit streams or on a block by block basis. That is, we take two bits at a time and use one of these points as the signal for representation of that, those two bits. As far as the uh, modulation is concerned, therefore, you can think of this being the cosine of the cosine part of the carrier and this being the sine part of the carrier. So, you are doing an antipodal modulation on the cosine component as well as on the sine component, on the quadrature component, right? So, depending on what bit sequence you have, for example, if two bits are 1, 1, then uh, we have cosine 2 pi f 0 t and you also have sine 2 pi f 0 t being simultaneously represented, right? That is, this will be represented by this amplitude of this carrier and this amplitude of the sinusoidal carrier, right? And the resultant phasor that you will get is this point, right? Similarly, you have, when you have 0, 1, your uh, quadrature, the, the in phase carrier is minus cosine 2 pi of 0 t and the quadrature carrier is plus sine 2 pi of 0 t and the resultant of these two is this phasor. This is the net signal that you end up sending and so on for each of the four possible phases that you can have, right? Corresponding to the four bits that you can have. Now, uh, how you allocate these bits to the corresponding uh, waveforms or the corresponding phases is somewhat arbitrary except that it is, it is useful to follow a certain uh, pattern. For example, if you might notice in this diagram, I got this point representing a 1, 1, this point representing a 0, 1, a 0, 0 and 1, 0. Do you notice any pattern in this scheme of things, in this representation of these four points on the constellation by these respective bit pairs? Only one bit transformation. One bit gray code. The gray code transformation. That is, as you go from one point on the constellation to its neighboring point I, on either side of the neighbor, neighborhood, right? You only change one bit in the representation. That is, I am representing this as a 1, 1 and this as a 0, 1, whereas this one has gone through a, trans a transition. Similarly, I, as I go from here to here, this represents a 1, 0. Can you guess a reason as to why this will be useful to do that? Any suggestion on that? Why it will be useful? Error reduction. Error. Can you elaborate how? So yes, that's a good answer. But so if it violates the gray code, then there is an error. Okay. No, not like that. No. no. Okay, it's really very simple. Now, when you are, of course, we are we are going to talk about it in detail when we talk about demodulation, but roughly. You can see that error in this case refers to the event that I might confuse or wrongly decide when I really transmitted this point on the constellation, I might wrongly decide that the transmitted point was this or this or this. These are the likelihoods when you are making your decision at the receiver. In the presence of noise, you will make one of these 
wrong decisions if ever you make a wrong decision, right? Now, the most probable wrong decisions will be those which correspond to adjacent symbols or adjacent points in the constellation because they are the ones which are, one can easily go to due to noise, right? So therefore, when that ha happens, we would like to make its impact as small as possible on the original binary bit pattern, right? And therefore, you want to make sure that your neighboring symbols do not differ from each, each other by more than one bit. So if at all there is a symbol error at the receiver, it gets converted to only a single bit error rather than multiple bit errors. So that is the advantage of using gray coding representation or gray, coding, uh, gray code mapping on the constellation diagram. So are these points clear? Now also to further recapitulate for you, we had discussed certain disadvantages of the QPSK waveform, right? And the specific disadvantage was we could easily have a incoming bit pattern which takes us from succeeding bit pairs going from 1, 1 to 0, 0 or 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0, right? In which case, we can expect 180 degree phase transitions to take place in the waveform, right? For example, we had first, two, uh, first pair as 1, 1 and the next pair as 0, 0. We are going from this phase to this phase which is 180 degree uh, opposite to the pre uh, previous phase or similarly, I might go from here to here. So it's quite possible that at various stages in the waveform, you'll have a 180 degree phase shift transitions, which are undesirable, particularly when you finally band limit this waveform. Such 180 degree phase shift variations will cause the envelope of the signal to go through zeros. So essentially, you'll get a non-uniform amplitude or a non-constant envelope waveform. Right? after filtering. If you have infinite bandwidth, it will not create any problem if, if you have rectangular pulses. But we know that finally we are not going to have rectangular pulses and therefore this 180 degree phase shift transitions really mean that you have to go through an envelope variation which goes through zeros. Right? It becomes zeros in between. The amplitude does not remain constant throughout after filtering. Now, to offset that effect, let us see what we can do. Let us return to this constellation diagram again. In this constellation diagram, I had represented this point as a, let us say, corresponding to an incoming bit pair of 1, 1. And how did I generate this incoming bit pair of 1, 1? I looked at two successive bits coming in, right? And then mapped those two successive bits onto this point. Now, this is actually a slightly artificial way of doing things, if you may notice, because I have to wait for two bits, look at what the, two, what the bit pair was, and then carry out this mapping. I could as well carry out a mapping as and when each bit is coming along. And each bit is coming along at, let us say, a specific interval T sub B, right? And you are, you are doing this mapping, as we have talked about, at <coughs> intervals of 2 T sub B, right? because you are going to wait for two bit intervals to look at the sequence or this sequence or this sequence and decide which of the constellation points needs to be transmitted. Now what I could do was I need not wait up to the second uh, bit to come along and then decide as and when each bit comes along I let it decide now what the next phase will be, right? So as if your, your choice on the constellation is decided by uh, not the two bits, uh, by, by not looking at the complete pair first and then deciding, but it keeps on making a transition every TB seconds. You are still looking at two bits, right? You had, you had a previous, let us say you had a previous phase here somehow, right? <laughs> now, at the after TB seconds, one of these bits is going to change. One is going to remain constant because um, every TB seconds, only one bit will be changing, right? Let us say one of them changes and you get, come here. It has to and come here to because one only one, one of the bits is changing at a time. So, it should not It has to come there. It has to come either there or there. Let me first explain, then you please ask your doubts. 
Let's say this corresponds to previous mm. and this corresponds to new. New. Right? So now the next one at the next after T B second after T sub B seconds, this will disappear. Yes, sir. Sorry. Right? This will become previous mm. and you'll get one new bit. So that means you can't come down anyway, sir. No. Okay, depends on what the new bit is, you will either go down or go up. Now, okay, no, go left right. Left. Okay, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yes, because the new one, because the previous one now is one, you'll come here. Yes, sir, we can't go down. Right? Uh, and I think I'll elaborate further on this point. The main point is, uh, yeah, so either you'll stay there or you'll go on this side. Is it clear? So either there will be no phase transition or there will be a phase transition of how much? You are gone from here to here, 90 degrees, right? Similarly, if you are here, again, uh, this zero will move here, right? And therefore, you should be either moving here. No, sir. Uh, one will move, right? So we can have 180 and uh, 90 both. Either we stay there or go up. Uh, if this is previous, this is new, yes, sir. this becomes yeah. 1 here, so right? Go. Now, depending on whether it is First 0 or 1, either we will move up or 180 degrees. No, we will not have 180 degrees. So, if we have 0, 1. I can have 180 degrees? Yes, sir. <coughs> no, I thought 180 was out of the question that way. So, what if it is? Hmm. Okay, let me return to this point. Although so, I, hmm? it is zero, then it will move to left and it will one, then move to right. And then wait for next bit. And then move to this one. So, it is zero. See, to start with, we had one zero. And we are interpreting this to be the previous one. bit and this to be the new bit. Right? So, it will ignore one. Surely, it doesn't have to be taken into consideration that the previous one. Yeah, the previous one will disappear. And a new one will come, which could be either 0 or 1. So, if it right? is 0, then it should move to left. If it is 1, to move to it. No, no, no. no it will come into it. I think I am making some mistake in explaining. Uh, it's actually, should be quite obvious that you are only changing one bit, right? And therefore, you can only go to one of the neighboring points. Because you are only changing one of the two bits. Uh, so I think you one zero and zero one are changed. Sir, one is the previous bit, sir. But in one zero, one is the previous bit. So one is the previous bit. No, but uh, and one is the previous bit because you move to so from zero zero you move to one. I think I'll try to explain it in a different way first, and then come back to this diagram. Maybe we'll we'll ignore this confusion for the time being. Um, yes, I think I better finish this uh, explanation. Otherwise, this is going to create trouble. Um, I took it for granted that it will be very easy to explain. Now, let's try waveform. Corresponding to this, so let's say the point is that every T B seconds, T sub B seconds, you are going through it. Can we can we have some uh, quiet, please? Uh, 
every t sub b seconds we are going through a bit transition, right? So let's say we are resolving it into basically what we are doing is we are extending each bit to really to be to an interval which is twice this. I think this is the mistake which is which is, see that constellation diagram is not everything in the case of uh, this particular scheme that I'm talking about now. Uh, we are really extending this to to, to uh, twice this interval, right? Similarly, the next one will come along, and the transition is here. I'm sorry, this should have been. Right, this bit is extended up to here, and the next bit uh, goes up to here. So this is zero. This this represents this one here, and this zero is represented by this. Right? Let me take a, take a fresh page. You have an incoming bit stream corresponding to 1, then 0, let's say again 0, right? And let's say then 1, and so on, right? What we are really doing is, uh, we are now looking, the change is being made, I think the reason why we are making, uh, we are getting confused there is because the change is being made only by one bit every TB seconds, whereas the change is retained for a duration of two, uh, two t seconds, two t b seconds. So we have these are your bit intervals. What I really do is actually this is a point I should have first explained before I uh, go to the phasor diagram. We need to look at two bits in an interval of two t seconds, but the way we are doing that looking is slightly different from what we were doing earlier. Since we are looking at 2t seconds, we really let this bit extend up to an interval of, so I am converting this one bit stream into two bit streams, the i, I bit stream and the q bit stream, right? You can think of, think of this process as follows. I am converting this into two quadrature bit streams, one I am calling the i bit stream, the other I am calling the q bit stream, right? The in each of these uh, bit streams, basically I have half the bit rate, right? I take alternate bits of each, let us say the even bits go into the i bit stream and the odd bits can go into the uh, q bit stream, right? So the even, let us say the first one, uh, the zeroth one, it is 1, is extended over an interval of 2 dB seconds and this is how it is represented. The next even bit is this 0, right? And this is how it goes, right? And now let us see what happens to the qubit stream. To start with, you have a zero. Let's say before that, suppose this was one. I will not show that. So at this point, you have a zero, and this zero will persist up to this point. And the next one is a one, so it will persist up to this point, right? And now, actually, this is the important thing. What you will see is that the transitions in the two bit streams are really offset with respect to each other by a bit interval, right? They are not occurring together. This was a mistake we were making when we were looking at the constellation diagram without regard to the physical processing that we were carrying out, right? When you regard them as occurring together, basically that is what QPSK is. You just look at these two bits together and then decide a point in the constellation. But right now, what we'll do is we look at what is happening at each of these points, right? So as you can see, either in a in a particular interval of TB seconds, whichever you might take, the previous one of the bits will remain constant, and the one of one of them is going to a transition, right? No matter which interval of TB seconds you take, right? So you can only go from the present bit pair value to one of the neighboring bit pair values. Is it clear now? And therefore, you can only move from any point in this constellation to one of the neighboring points in the constellation. Right? Not clear still? Suppose you are 1, right? 
this one of these i streams is going to remain at one now this one may change or may not change depending on what you had here right but no matter how it happens whether it changes or not only one of the bit one of the bits is two bits is changing right if only one of the two bits is changing and you have a gray code mapping you can only go to a neighboring point because of gray code mapping right is it clear because you had a gray code mapping and only one of the two bits is changing after tb seconds so every tb seconds you are moving from any point in the constellation to one of the neighboring points that's the whole point right so i think the explanation that we were giving earlier was faulty because it was not taking into account this particular mechanism by which we were creating the phase transitions is it clear so therefore this kind of quadrature phase shifting it is still quadrature because we will still have at any time four possible phases right but you are only going to go through phase transitions of 90 degrees by a mechanism of offsetting of the bit streams in the i and q streams the bit patterns in the i and q streams are offset with respect to each other by a bit interval or by half the symbol interval if you call 2t uh, 2t sub b a symbol interval then you are offsetting these two bit streams by half the symbol interval uh if you can address your question this way please i think others will also benefit whatever doubts you may have may have dipankar uh, no, speak out no, is it clear yeah. anybody maybe is it fine is it really clear <laughs> you can speak out if it is not clear i can explain again it doesn't really matter if we slow slow the process a little bit because it is a fairly important point to understand so we explain this first how well i did that is the i bit stream the q bit stream how how will run it first of all okay i what is really important is to realize that q bit stream is based on this i mean uh, this this zero here corresponds to this zero here right the next zero here will come after uh, the, sorry this zero here is here right this one here <coughs> comes here so every bit is therefore being extended to twice its duration because you are looking at a new bit uh, every tb seconds but the processing is done on a symbol basis where symbol is two bits Yeah. Gray code, you have I and Q. I and Q are. That's right. Right. You can think of the gray code. Uh, basically, remember, each of the quadrature phase, the quadrature carriers is being is modulating, is being modulated by. You can think of as the I and Q bit streams, right? So it's either being modulated by I stream, which is the which is modulating the cosine carrier, and the Q stream is modulating the uh, sinusoidal carrier, right? so depending on where you are on this and where you are on this you will be on one of these four it's no fix constant so we are transmitting a signal every 2 db second no we are transmitting the signal continuously but now the transitions will occur every tb seconds in the qpsk the transitions will be occurring every 2 tb seconds so what we have really done is we have traded off the points of transition which were earlier occurring at a slower rate right by the magnitude of transitions which but the the transitions themselves are now occurring more frequently every tb seconds in this manner right earlier we were looking at these two things together as a, a bit pattern 10 and transmitting this phase then we were waiting for 2 tb seconds looking at the next bit pattern 01 then transmitting this bit phase right now i'll go through many more transitions mm-hmm. i'll go through a transition here another transition here and so on and so forth in the earlier case the error detection would have been not there if we were talking no, to person the error detection so if there is no error detection even mm-hmm. now so the gray coding advantage will still persist so if you transfer two bits at a time then let let it two packets mm-hmm. coded at one bit that is one bit as one symbol a one symbol right okay sir yes so then uh, the concept of having a chain from Only from one point to other doesn't remain. Like in this case, we can say that if we can go only have a sheet of 90, not 180 between them. That is the point. 
uh, it's not the question of error correction. It is the fact that earlier, in our earlier scheme of things, we could have 180 degree phase shift, trans phase shifts or transitions. In our new scheme of things, <coughs> we could only have 90 degree phase shift uh, or phase transitions, mm -hmm. but the transitions will now occur every bit interval basis rather than every pair of bit interval basis, right? This scheme of QPSK is called offset QPSK, in which the uh, incoming bit stream is first split into two st streams I and Q, and then each of them modulates one of the two quadrature carriers, and then they are added together, right? So that is offset quadrature phase. The, the two pulses in the two uh, stream pat two bit patterns are offset with respect to each other by an interval of one bit interval or half the symbol interval, right? So I hope this is now sufficiently clear. Even though I have had to rather explain it rather painfully, it was actually a very simple thing. Uh, let's uh, therefore talk about OQPSK mathematically now. If you have physically understood what is happening here, let's go through a mathematical characterization of the offset QPSK. So basically what we have seen is that offset QPSK delays the quadrature waveform by half a pulse width. Okay. And where I am defining the pulse width as that corresponding to a pair of pulses, a pair of bits. And then the result is that the phase changes. Can you see this color all right? No. That is not writing very smoothly. Okay. Let me try this. Yeah, I think I will try green. Okay, I will change that color, no problem. Uh, phase changes, this you can see clearly, uh, only by 90 degrees. At every bit interval. Right? So mathematically, we can say something like this. If I were to write my modulated waveform, you can think of this as actually a sum of two modulated waveforms in which the I stream modulates, let us say, the in phase carrier and the Q stream modulates the quadrature phase carrier, right? That is one way of looking at it. Or the even bits modulate one other carrier and the odd bits represent another carrier. And the even and odd bits have pulse shapes associated with each other which are essentially uh, essentially offset with respect to each other by half the bit interval, half the uh, pulse width or half the simple interval, not bit interval, half the bit interval. So you can think of this even bits being represented by A sub 2L and associated pulse shape being ST occurring at 280. Uh, no, not in this case. Not 2LT because you are having a new pulse every 3 seconds. So, when you write it corresponding to A2L. Okay. Let so me. If you're writing A two L, then right, right. Okay, you're absolutely right. But this T here, I'm. Um, so this T is two T sub. Okay. <coughs> Plus J times. I'm taking the odd bits here, which I'll put it present by A two L plus one, into a pulse shape S T minus L T minus T by two. Okay. So this pulse 
is offset by this pulse by t by 2 where t by 2 is equal to t sub b right. So this is uh, one way of representing mathematically the modulation process of offset q p s k right. Sir, in the yes. previous page you said that the phase changes by 90 degrees at every bit interval. May change. May. I am sorry if I convey that impression it is wrong. It may change in fact the whether the phase changes or not will depend on the bit pattern that is coming along right. But the magnitude by which it may change is at the most 90 degrees right. Where A sub L is going to be either plus A or minus A depending on whether the LF data bit <coughs> is 1 or it is 0 right and T is here the duration of a pair of bits I have already given that up over there duration of a pair of bits. Alternatively, as one of you wanted to write it in terms of TB, you can do that. T sub B. And then this will become minus 2L T sub B and so on. Sure. Remember that the duration of each of these STs is how much? This pulse shape has a duration of 2TB two, two two equal to T, right? But a new pulse is coming and interfering with the previous pulse every TB seconds, right? And deciding on the new phase, right? You are going from the previous phase to a new phase every TB seconds, right? So therefore, is it alright? You can remove this now? We can also alternatively write this modulation process as follows. I can write C T is equal to incidentally these are all baseband expressions I am writing. As far as the uh, um, passband expression is concerned you know how to go from a complex baseband representation to the corresponding passband representation. You multiply this with e to the power j omega C T and take the real part of that right. That will give you uh, this modulating the co uh, cosine component and this modulating the sine component. That is standard. So I am only writing the baseband complex envelope representations. Yeah, coming back to this alternate representation, we can also write this as BL ST minus LT, right? Where if you were to uh, see. You can think of this as a complex number, right? This BL will be now uh, what? Complex. No. This is the point. Very good. That is the point I expected you to respond with. BL will be purely real for even for even bits or for uh, even L. Yes. Right, and the value will be equal to a sub l. It will be purely imaginary for odd l, and the value will be again, let's say j j times a sub l. Right, basically, that's the that same i q bit stream concept. Right, at even times, you are only changing the um, um, the real part of the carrier. Right changing that to either uh, plus amplitude to minus amplitude or vice versa right. At odd bit intervals when the Q stream becomes active you are changing the quadrature carrier that is all. That is the physical picture behind this statement. So uh, any questions about the OQPSK representation? So one thing you therefore appreciate is that unlike UPSK where I just had to spe uh, specify a constellation diagram, 
that was a complete specification of QPSK, right? In the case of OQPSK, just giving a constellation diagram is not enough, right? I know these are the four phases, but I no longer can just say that uh, that how these four phases are going to be invoked. There is no uh, immediate way by which I can associate with an incoming bit stream the phase sequence that will finally come out of the modulator, right, in the OQPSK case, right. So, uh, yes, please. So, in this upper one, we were, we were adding the two at C at a particular instant was some real class imaginary. Yes. yes. Here it is either real or real. How can you equate the two? Yeah, so some of those. So either, 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 either even or odd. Here this is another way of looking at what is being done, right? That's all. Uh, there are two ways to explain that again. Let me go back to these diagrams, right? Every bit in every even bit intervals. Let's say this is an even bit, right? Nothing is going to happen to. Uh, the, I mean the, the new pulse that is coming along is this one, right? The previous one stays. This expression does not say that the previous one has disappeared. The one which was which was active at uh, the previous bit interval is still there in the sum. And to that you are adding a new pulse, right, corresponding to this. So this previous one, this one is continuing. But to that you are adding a purely real component. Here, you are adding a purely imaginary component in the next bit interval, while the previous one is still there, right? So at any point, the number is still complex. It has to be, because you are going to have to work. So then how did you say that BL is purely real? Okay. So you wrote down that BL is purely real. But see, this so you are written down there, BL is purely real and purely imaginary. That is true. BL is true, ST is It is true, isn't it? So ST is overlapping. It is the STs which are overlapping. Right? The, every TV seconds, there is a new ST coming in, while the previous ST is still active. Right? So, the, at any stage, therefore, you are getting contributions from two of these STs. Right? The previous one and the present one. Think about it a bit carefully. This is something that you can easily understand. Right? Okay. Now, the point that I was making was that because of the time offset, OQPSK not completely characterized by a signal constellation. You require something more than that for its, its characterization. Not completely specified or characterized by a constellation diagram. You need to specify rules which need to be imposed to constrain the phase transitions, right? Because certain rules are being followed, right? And that is how you are going from one point in the constellation to the any other point in the constellation. And there, there, these transitions are now governed by certain rules. In the QPSK, there were no rules. At random, you could go from one point in the constellation to another point in the constellation. But now, we can, we have to follow certain rules. That and this is best explained by viewing the modulation process of OQPSK as if you are working with a finite state machine, with which you are familiar with your in your sequential logic and all that. And in the digital modulation context, it is uh, conventional to represent this finite state machine action by means of a diagram called the trellis diagram. So, I am going to introduce to you what is a trellis diagram, the concept of a trellis diagram. This is a trellis diagram for uh, OQPSK modulation. Now, first, what is a trellis diagram? Basically, a trellis diagram consists of a set of nodes, which represent the different possible states in which your machine can be, right? Our constellation diagram has four points, so we can be 
in one of these four states corresponding to four points in the constellation. And uh, you know these states are 1 plus j, 1 minus j, this 1 plus j, 1 minus j refers to your uh, constellation diagram, right. You can think of this point as 1 plus j, this as uh, 1 minus j, this is minus 1 plus j and this is minus 1 minus j, right. So you, these are the four possible states. So you start with um, having these uh, nodes corresponding to these four possible states. Now these nodes are replicated every uh, bit interval, right, a long time. So you have once, uh, you have a set of four nodes at this time, uh, a set of four nodes again after one time interval and so on and so forth, right. Now, so therefore at each time you can be in one of these four nodes, right. And as you step through the trellis, you are really going through a particular bit sequence and therefore a particular phase, uh, um, a particular phase pattern on that uh, constellation diagram. Now, let us say you are you are not. Let's discuss the OQPSK trellis diagram. Let's say you are in state one plus j, right? Now where can you go? Let us say these are the even bit times and these are the odd bit times. At even bit times, what is going to happen? You are only going to change the uh, imaginary components because your, your real component is going to stay the same. Is it clear? At even bit times, the real component is going to stay the same, come back to this diagram, right. So what is really changing is, uh, it depends on what you are calling even or odd, right. Odd the even one. Uh, it is a matter of definition, it does it really does not matter. Um, Okay, it's a matter of definition. It doesn't really matter. I have taken it to be that way, say, right? Uh, if we if we take this to be these alternate intervals to be even and odd, it doesn't matter how you start, right? So here I have only allowed a change into the change of the imaginary components. So one plus j can at best become one minus j, or it can stay as one plus j, right? So depending on let us say whether incoming bit stream is uh, incoming new bit value is 1 or 0. So 1 I have indicated by the transition that will take place, these connections show the transitions, right, In from the first set of nodes to the next set of nodes and so on. So as a new bit is 1, you, you go to 1 plus j. If it is 0, you can go to 1 minus j, right. Similarly, if you are initially in 1 minus j, if it is 0, you stay there. If it is 1, you change to 1 plus j, right, and so on. So basically, you will see that in this interval, you will have these are the various possible paths through which you can go, depending on where you initially are. If you are in this node, you can either go here or here. If you are on this node, you can either go here or here. If you are here, you can either go here or here. Here, this way or that way. Right? These are the only ways in which you can progress from time, this time to the next time, in, next bit time. At the next bit time, which you can regard as odd bit times, right, you will only be changing the real part of the component, right. So you can go from 1 plus j to minus 1 plus j or stay there, right. This 1 may change to either plus 1, remain plus 1 or it may change to minus 1. Similarly, 1 minus j can stay at 1 minus j or become minus 1 minus j, right. So these are the possible transitions you can have 
at this time. Again, you can progress like this. So, the sequence of states through which you go will of course depend on your initial state and the specific bit pattern that comes along later. So, as a particular bit pattern comes along, you will be following through a particular path in this trellis. Right? So, as you trace a path through the trellis, you are specifying a specific bit pattern. So, a complete specification of a modulation um, scheme like OQPSK requires you to specify it by means of a trellis diagram like this. Right? It is not only the fact that you have four phases, that is four points in the constellation space, but also uh, the mechanism by which these phase, phase transitions occur is best depicted in this kind of a diagram. You will notice, we will see later that this kind of a diagram is useful in depicting many kinds of modulation schemes which have memory in it, right, where the next phase depends on what the previous phases were. There is a particular uh, phase trajectory that you follow and therefore there is a particular uh, path through which you have to trace the trellis. So, is the concept of a trellis diagram uh, clear and what it can do for us? Hmm? So, basically you are specifying a sequence of complex numbers, right? Suppose you are following this path, specifying a sequence of complex numbers and what is the sequence of complex numbers specifying for us? Come on. The phase, the successive phases of the carrier that you will be transmitting, right? So, you start from, suppose you start from here and let us say you go here and then you go here, but you know that these phases, now you cannot possibly go from here to let us say here. This is the constraint imposed by our modulation scheme, right? So, if we, uh, if you are here then we can either go here or here, that is all. If you are here, we can either go here or here, right? So, anyway, uh, once we are given a pattern, we can follow a specific path and predict the sequence of complex numbers which will be finally used to modulate your carrier, okay? So, that is the concept of a trellis diagram. Incidentally, even if you are not able to draw this here, it is available in books and uh, uh, maybe I will Xerox some portion of this and give you this material. If you are able to draw it, it is fine. I to tell you that there is going to be, um, this is not the last we have heard of OQPSK. A small variation of OQPSK can give rise to further improvement in properties. What is the improvement in properties we have got in OQPSK as compared to QPSK? Let us quickly just capture onto this point. The improvement is in the waveform that will result. The phase transitions will be of smaller magnitude, plus minus 90 degrees rather than plus minus 180 degrees, right? Now, still, we will still have the trouble when we filter this waveform because we are still having phase transitions, right? And therefore, uh, we are going to go through variations in envelope magnitude. It is not going to stay constant after you band limit this waveform, right? Because when you do band limitation, sharp phase transitions whether they are of plus minus 180 degree kind or plus minus 90 degree kind are not going to be admissible. They are going to smooth, be smoothened out and therefore amplitude variations are going to come in. And remember amplitude variations are not good if there are non-linearities in your system which are typically the case in um, channels like the satellite communication channels. There are going to be no, a lot of non-linearities you have to work with. For example, the TWT amplifiers traveling there to amplifiers that you use at the satellite end are essentially nonlinear devices. If you operate at a particular amplitude, they work fine. But if you allow amplitude variation to take place, you no longer show that your gain will be going to be a linear function of the amplitude, right? So, it is best to keep the gain in a, I mean, you to work at a small neighborhood in the operating region. Amplitude variations not permissible. Also, uh, these amplitude variations are not good from the point of view of transmitter efficiency. We talked about that last time. So, it 
there is still need for looking for other variations of OQPSK which will not have any amplitude variations whatsoever. Fortunately, it is possible to do so and we will discuss one such scheme next time. It is called minimum shift keying and we will um, think of this in two different ways. One in which it is regarded as an extension of OQPSK and in the other in which it is regarded as a special case of FSK. So it is a very interesting modulation scheme. There are two different ways of looking at it. I think I will stop here and we will meet tomorrow.